guys, it's yet another thing over here on YouTube. So previously, I reacted to the social credit meme, which is based on this so-called social credit system in China. But of course, that was just a meme. And I've actually been quite curious about what this whole social credit system is all about, because I've heard that how the system actually works is very different from how the memes presented. And also, I've heard that it was never implemented, like it was just an idea. And that's why even most Chinese people have never heard of it. So today, I want to look at a few videos providing info on this and react to them from a Taiwanese perspective. And if you're new here and already confused, no, Taiwan is not a part of the People's Republic of China. And even though it's not internationally recognized as a country, indeed, the Chinese government does not have any direct control over the island, unlike, say, Hong Kong or Macau. And this is why whatever system is being used in China really does not concern Taiwan. So I'm actually just as clueless as most of you guys probably are on this whole social credits situation. So that being said, I, I guess we'll check it out and and learn about it together. Jo Aini is retired, but when her town was brought into a new government program, her services were required. <laughs> now she gets paid about 50 bucks a month to watch and record the lives of her 3,000 neighbors. Oh, wow. So as one they of have six a supervisor. So information collectors. Wow. China started piloting its social score system in 2015 in villages like this one. Here's how it works. You start with a thousand points. If you do something bad, you get points docked. If you do something good and you happen to be spotted, you get a boost. When you happen to be spotted. So when you do something good, you also have to make sure that someone is looking. <laughs> Oh my god. These journals filled with tales of neighbors helping old people or seen leaving trash in hallways end up in a local office. A government employee gives each entry a score. The results go public. It goes public? I had no idea that it would go public. That's crazy. <laughs> On top of that, he got this didn't pocket the money he found trophy. Raising his score could mean more money later, with lower interest loans and discounts on utilities and rent. Okay, so I guess that is one example of how you can earn social credit points when you find some lost money or wallet on the street and you don't keep that to yourself, but you try to return it to the owner. So, I okay, I can see that the system is trying to be like, when you do something good, you get rewarded. So that on its own, I can kind of agree with. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it could work in encouraging more people to behave the same. But then again, I'm also thinking like, you know, in Taiwan, we don't really have any system or law similar to that so you don't get rewarded when you don't keep lost things to find to yourself but still we have this reputation that the general public just don't take lost thing they saw on the street and a lot of foreigners are actually quite surprised about this like a lot of people have been making videos and comments about how in Taiwan if you leave your car on the street with your key cards nobody is going to take your car and also people have been doing these social experiments where they intentionally leave their wallets rented on the street and see if anyone would take this and usually if it's in Taiwan nobody is even going to touch the wallet so even after a few hours you can go back to the same place and you can still find your wallet there so what I'm trying to say is that it seems a lot of these things perhaps can be achieved even without such systems so maybe instead through education and also by creating a society where people are wealthy enough so that people feel like even without taking that lost money they could still live their quality life and so naturally, people are not going to think about picking, taking that money and keeping that to themselves. And of course, I'm not here to assert which side is better because to some extent, I do understand that maybe when you have such reward system, it's going to change people's behavior more effectively. But I, all I'm saying is that if the same goal has been achieved in a way less extreme way, then personally, I would much prefer to live in the society that is taking the less extreme method. That's all I'm saying. 
But the program is more than just public naming and shaming. If someone slips below a thousand points, even just a little, there are serious consequences. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. I think that this is going too far. Skipped out. He paid his share, but the local court didn't care. Four million people have been blocked from buying high-speed train tickets over low social credit, and more than 11 million from buying flights. That's also what I've heard, like people have already been influenced by this system in that they cannot buy plane tickets and train tickets. So like even though the system is still on trial, people have already indeed been influenced by it. To raise his score, Zhang gets in line at a local community office to donate money the government says will go to charity. <laughs> Zhang keeps track of his social score closely, so you need to kind of pay your way out of where it. his donations end up. Okay, so the way they explain how you can redeem yourself from a low social credit point, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of the so-called indulgences in, in Catholic in the past. Like, okay, I'm not religious, so maybe I have some misunderstanding of the meaning of indulgences, but simply from what they taught us in school about how this indulgences used to work and how it was being abused, it really kind of reminds me of what they're doing here, like the whole, especially the whole remission of punishment thing. By 2020, China plans to track, rate, reward, and punish all of its citizens, essentially turning every personal experience into a transaction. Not that Zhang minds. He's got his high score back. At least for now. I mean, isn't it kind of sad to hear that one only feels like a normal person when they have enough social credit points? I don't know. Okay, so after watching this video and reading through some comments, I realized that there are actually a lot of mixed information on the internet and it's quite confusing because you will see people saying that the such social credit system do not exist in China and a lot of Chinese people have never heard of it. And But you will also see other people saying that the system is basically the exact same as the credit system system they use in the bank in the US and that the Western media is kind of over exaggerating it but then you will also see these videos coming up with actual real footages of people going through the system that is obviously not the same as the credit system they use in the bank in the US okay so like if you look at this comment which is from an actual Chinese citizen according to them there is a real social credit system that was proposed and planned by the government but apparently it is not implemented like it was still on trial and only in the few cities like we saw in the video. So this is called the social credit system. And then because I also saw Asian boss making a video where they interview Chinese people about the social credit system. But in the video, they were mostly talking about the credit system in the bank regarding their finance, basically. And similarly, under all videos about social credit system, you always see comments talking about how the social credit system is really just the same as the bank credit system in Western countries and how the Western media is misinterpreted their social credit system. And at first I was quite confused, but I think that this might be two different systems. Like on the one hand, there's the system that is already used in the, the entire China. That is the same as the credit system in the bank in the US. But then there is indeed another system called the social credit system to be precise, but it is still on trial and it was only proposed but never implemented and most Chinese people have never heard of it. So if I understand it correctly, these are two different things. So based on that, 
that the real social credit system that is being proposed, apparently there is an official document from the government of this area they were first testing the system on. And they have listed out on this document several things you can do to gain social credit points and also things that will lose your social credit points. So now I kind of want to look into them and react to them. If you overdraft on your credit card or your bank, minus 10 points. If you return lost money, we're talking 10,000 RMB or more, and this is probably returning lost money to the government, <laughs> by the way, if, they, if you just somehow come across it, that's not leading people to scams at all. That's plus 10 points. If you use WeChat, forums, blogs, or other internet technology, so just the internet, oh. to publish and transmit negative information, that's minus 50. And that's just negative, that's negative information about the government. Okay, so about what you post on the internet and what you might say about the government, I think that even, if I understand it correctly, even without the social credit system, people are already getting into trouble for maybe posting a, a public post and criticize the government and or saying something that contradicts the government's propaganda. So I guess this is something that is already happening even without the system. If you report illegal conduct such as Product, uh, people participating in feudal superstition, so Chinese religions and things like that, um, <laughs> unlawful construction, environmental pollution, oh, wow. or participation in cult organizations. That's a plus 10. <laughs> so basically, if you're a rat, you, <laughs> you get plus 10. Okay, so the whole writing other people out and you can get a higher social credit score, it reminds me that when Taiwan used to be autocratic, I think there used to be a similar thing going on. Like you could report other people's behavior if you think that is problematic to the government and against the government and sometimes you would get reward by reporting these people and writing these people out. And I don't think that is going to go well because just from the examples we have seen in Taiwan, a lot of the time it's just going to turn into people reporting on, on other people that they hate or they are try, just trying to revenge on other people. So if you noticed Taiwanese video game called Detention, based on the White Horror period, which is basically a period of the autocratic Taiwan to its extreme, in the story, the main character also reported on her boyfriend because she thought her boyfriend was cheating on her, and in the end, her her boyfriend was killed and she got this huge reward from the school saying that the country will thank you. So no, I don't think the role itself is going to work out that well. It's It probably j is just going to send a lot of innocent people to jail, just like what has happened in the history in Taiwan. If you are a part of a community, which everyone is in China, basically the community has like a communist party head okay so like the and woman we saw in the last video get information on all the people that are staying there because keep in mind you can't just randomly stay in a random place in china you have to register it's a very archaic system under chairman mao it still exists if you go around and get that information on who who's currently there and then report back to the communist party of china you get plus three points tax evasion Minus 100 points. Oh, Seriously, though, serious. the entire system of China is tax evasion, and it's led by the tax officials. <laughs> All right, that's just that's just kind of how it works. If you help the community resolve a major dispute between neighbors, plus 10 points. I think that takes some pressure off the cops. Uh, if you go into the traffic stuff, if you get a, I've heard like about a fine traffic rules between 500 that will lose your social RMB, points, which is really easy to do, especially if you go a little a tiny bit over the speed limit because of the speed cameras everywhere in China. That's a minus 10 points. But also if you get a parking ticket twice, that's minus 10 points as well. Um, if you set off firecrackers, uh, dance in a square, what? like those old women that like to do that, um, you know, with, without properly applying for a permit. So like people dancing in the squares or parks or like using firecrackers during the festivals, that's like everywhere in Taiwan. So can I just report on all of them and I get like infinite social credits basically? Illegally holding classes, that's minus 50 points. So if you're teaching people anything, really, it's minus 50 points. They don't want people to having under underground meetings, basically. It needs to be in a CCP run or looked at school. Okay, so I'm a bit confused here. Does this mean that tutors, like private tutors, are not allowed in China? Like it has to be registered and it has to be legal. I don't know, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but that's just the impression that I got according to his description. If you violate reproductive planning policies, meaning you break the two-child policy in that you have three children, 
Um, or you don't allow the government to sterilize you, which actually does happen in the government reproductive planning buildings throughout the countryside. That's minus 40. So if you have an extra kid, Bye-bye social credit. So I can see the social credit may definitely also take inspiration from some of these rules, like the this child policy thing. If you donate organs, what? unpaid, so you're not getting paid for them, plus 100 points. And I'm assuming you have to donate organs of family members, because I'm pretty sure you that probably should be donating organs of people you don't know, or your own. So like what, you can just sell your organ for social credit points? That's crazy, absolutely insane. Okay, so those were some examples of what can earn or lose you social credit points. So I guess that being said, you don't really lose social credit point if you say Taiwan is a country. <laughs> So personally, I definitely think it's a really scary system even just to hear about it Like if you imagine living under such system, there's just so much restriction And when you do these things that are not even serious crimes You will not be able to buy like plane tickets, train tickets You are not able to live like a normal person That's just to me, it, it sounds really insane But then I also came across this comment from a Chinese person Claiming that most Chinese people when they hear about this rule they are in support of it because essentially it reinforced the laws and kind of encouraged people to behave and do good things and like participate in charity stuff like that um i don't know if it's true that most chinese people would agree to that when they see like in specific what this system is all about but personally as i have already said i believe that many of these things can actually be achieved even without the system like maybe through education or the government raising awareness of the citizens it definitely would take a lot longer it might not be as effective but from a Taiwanese perspective because you know Taiwan being the Republic of China also came from the same like the autocratic Chinese roots but gradually it became democratic so we kind of have seen both and personally I really would say that citizens are now living a way happier life when they have full freedom and they are following the law simply because they are well educated to tell right from wrong and also that the living quality they have is to a certain point that they do not feel the need to commit those crimes. But of course that is just my personal opinion and that was basically my reaction and thoughts on this whole social credit system proposed in China. So thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it so please leave a like if you did and please subscribe for more reaction videos from a Taiwanese perspective. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video.